to tell truth from propaganda. Sometimes it can be challenging to take a step back and listen to those who are different than us, to their those who we want to blame for everything, those who we fear, and actually hear their perspective. This was a struggle for Martin Niemöller, who was a Lutheran pastor. He was very anti-communist. And so early on, he supported Adolf Hitler, who was also anti-communist. For a long time, he supported him. And then he began to see the larger picture. And together with some other Lutheran clergy in Germany, they banded together and created a group in which they conspired against Hitler. Well, years later, Pastor Niemöller was lucky enough to be released from the concentration camps. And in 1946, he made a speech in which he shared how originally, when he saw the Nazis putting communists in camps, his thought process was that, well, the communists are opposed to religion, so maybe this is a good thing. And then as time went on, he saw the Nazis disappearing, people who had sicknesses that they weren't getting better from. Whether they were terminally ill or it was a medical condition, and since Pastor Niemöller had already bought into Hitler's propaganda, he started thinking, well, you know, these people are a financial drain on the state. Maybe this is what's best for the whole. And then when Pastor Niemöller and others saw the Nazis rounding up Jewish people simply because of their faith and inciting fear and hatred in others or from others toward the Jewish people. Then Pastor Niemöller and others realized just how far this had gone and how they had been complicit. And they had let this happen. And so, as a confession, Pastor Niemöller wrote, and you may have heard it, first they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak out. I suspect many of us, if we think about it, can share in Pastor Niemöller's confession. 
at least in some points of our lives. I mean, maybe it was way back on the school playground when the bully was picking on some other kid and we were just glad that they were distracted and not looking at us. Or in the workplace when a boss was harassing a coworker, but we wanted to keep our job security. Or it could be just in the ways that we benefit from the system today. The system that, that helps people like us and yet others struggle because of it. Because it can be really easy to just keep our head down and to keep quiet and to try to keep the peace when we are personally at peace. And it's just those other people suffering over there. But Jesus tells us that when they come for any of us, they come for Jesus. So this passage from Luke's Gospel today, I have to share with you, it is a troublesome one. It's not one I would choose to preach on if I had the choice. And I guess technically I had the choice, but I'm not really in a sermon series, and, and I like the idea that there are millions of people who are hearing the same gospel today. And that keeps me from preaching my own agenda. So here we are today. And it's hard, partly because we like to think of Jesus as our friend, as our brother, as someone who keeps us calm. And, and sometimes that's true. But in this passage today, Jesus tells us pretty clearly that he did not come just to bring us peace and warm fuzzies. Jesus came to turn our world upside down. Jesus, in his context, dives right into the middle of religion, of politics, of social constructs, of tradition, of family systems. You know, all those things we were taught not to talk about, instead of being taught how to talk about them. And then Jesus kind of gives us us a heads up that families may be torn apart and churches may even be divided when we follow and obey God's law. Now just before this passage, if you look just earlier in Luke, Jesus had been telling us, do not worry, but be prepared, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So get ready for change and to change. And now this? Is this not change he was talking about? It doesn't seem like a whole lot of fun to me. I don't know about you. It, it almost seems like it would be wise to just make like an ostrich and stick our heads in the sand until everything just passes on by. I mean, if something doesn't affect us personally, then can't we just pretend it doesn't matter and ignore it? Except... In the gospel, Jesus tells us that doesn't work that way. That what happens to any of God's children happens to Jesus. And whether it's someone on the other side of the aisle or the other side of the world who is marginalized and oppressed, 
We all are. In the first two readings that Tammy read for us today, we heard about prophets and how God's people often couldn't stand them because they told them things they didn't want to hear and told them they needed to change to follow God's law and they didn't want to do it. And so Jesus was kind of prepared in what we hear. And he tells us that he has come to bring fire. And it's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, can't we all just get along? But what we hear in Luke's Gospel, what we hear in all the Gospels, is that Jesus teaches that the greatest law is to love God and love others. That is the litmus test for all laws. If it's not about love, it's not, you're not understanding the law right. And Jesus is fierce about it. And frankly, we humans don't really like that too much, if you think about it. I mean, we do when it's about loving us, but we like to always, you know, find exceptions to the rule. Mm -hmm. And this isn't anything new. A lot of times people like to think, oh, it's just these days that this is all going on. It's not. It's throughout history. I mean, there are the Crusades. There's the Spanish Inquisition. There was Bloody Mary. <laughs> there were destroying indigenous people. There were witch hunts, slavery, human trafficking, and thousands of other aggressions and microaggressions. And today there still are. This is nothing new. But if we try, like Pastor Niemöller, to justify it, or condone it, or ignore it, well, that is the farthest thing from loving one na one's neighbor as oneself. And even though this passage sounds really harsh, I don't think Jesus is trying to threaten us in it. I think he's just stating the facts. And the facts that we learn from Scripture is that Jesus is very passionate about caring for those who are oppressed, who are powerless who are marginalized, who are looked down on. That's who he hung out with. And that's good news, because that includes us. And the good news is that Jesus is also very passionate about loving and redeeming sinners like us. And the good news is that Jesus, who was born into a world of conflict, is with us in our conflict. And the good news is that Jesus has come on fire to offer unconditional grace. And so then we are called upon to divide if necessary in order to offer that unconditional grace. My friends, Jesus states it pretty clearly in this passage. We can all see what's coming. Because it's always been. And through religion and politics and family systems, there's always going to be conflict. 
And the inclination to ignore something that doesn't affect us. In the name of keeping the peace, which is really just keeping our peace, it's not keeping the peace, is extremely tempting. But we were baptized <clears throat> and filled with the Holy Spirit. We were called in the water and the word to care for the world, for all of God's people, to work for justice. We are called to passionately and fiercely follow Jesus' example of loving everyone with that unconditional, no matter what kind of love. And to Speak up when necessary in order to follow the law of love because it matters. Amen.